Welcome guys to another Redstone video. I'm CT5K and today we are going over how to use the RPC 2 and 2.1. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Now for those of you who are wondering, can I learn how to use the RPC 1 in this video? No. While the input ports are identical for the RPC 1 and RPC 2 and the instruction sets are similar, a program intended for the RPC 1 will not be the same as a program intended for the RPC-2. So if you try to run one for the RPC-1 on the RPC-2 or 2.1, then it will not work right, and vice versa. If you try to use one intended for the 2 on the 1, it's not going to work. Now, with that being said, if you are using the RPC-2 or the newest model, the RPC-2.1, instead of the RPC-1, then you've come to the right place. Like I mentioned earlier, the input port for the RPC2 and RPC2.1 are identical to the original RPC. This is great for those who are moving from the RPC1 to the RPC2 or 2.1, as all you have to do is learn the instruction set. If this applies to you, then you can go ahead and skip over all this to just reach that part of the video. When it comes to the input port, there are two comparators right here. This left one is used for instructions, so this allows you to manipulate everything and run calculations. And this right one right here is used for numerical values. This allows the computer to adjust 16 values instead of just two if we are just using this left comparator. So for this computer to be effective, both of these comparators have to be used at the same time. So what I've done was I created a bunch of redstone wires, and by that I only mean two, with all the values needed for the RPC2 and 2.1, and then later in the video, we're going to be learning how to connect this Hydra 1004 into the RPC2. If we give a value of 1, we will add register 1 and register 2. If we give it a value of 2, then we will set the fourth register to the value of the third register. Giving it a signal strength of 3 will cause the third register to be wiped, so basically it will take whatever number it is and change it to 0. This function is nice because it allows you to control an RPC from the RPC2 or 2.1, so if you wanted, you could actually run programs on RPC2 or RPC1 from your RPC2. 4 will wipe register 1 and register 2. 5 will set register 1. Now here is where the RPC 2.1 breaks off from the RPC 2. In the RPC 2 you cannot not set the second register. So if you use this command then both registers will be set at the same time. However the RPC 2.1 was designed to fix this issue. So if you're using this command on the RPC 2.1, then know that the second register cannot be set while this instruction is running. Giving the machine a 7 will not register 1. I'll probably get some comments below asking, what happened to 6? Well, like in the RPC 1, it wasn't needed, so it is unused at the moment. And finally, if we give it a signal strength of 8, we will toggle the 2 times register 1. So if it was off, it will be on, and if it was on, it will be off. So like in the video of how to use the RPC-1, we are going to be using a addition program. So we'll be entering this by hand, but later we'll be learning how to program it using the Hydro 1004. To begin, we're going to flick this lever, which is 5 from the bottom, to set register 1 and then give it a signal of 1. Like I mentioned earlier, there is a slight difference between the RPC2 and 2.1. In the RPC2, this will also set the second register, but the second register will not be set in the RPC2.1. So for the RPC2.1, just give it a input of anything but 5 and the numerical value of 1, and it will set the second register to 1 if it's currently empty. Now we've set register 1, we will turn both of these off and then give it a signal strength of 1 with no numerical value to add register 1 and register 2. And if we come over here, you can see the output is 2. So I've gotten some requests for how the Hydro 1004 works with the RPC2. So what I've done was I just went ahead and created two lines to connect this Hydro 1004 to the RPC2. Now, these lines aren't necessary. You could build this Hydro 1004 and play, like literally place it directly, directly like here, but I would recommend you move it at least a couple blocks back just so that you can have full functionality and control over your Hydro 1004. 
So due to the Hydra 1004's selection options, we are going to have to break this and go down into the interior. When it comes to selecting a bite for the Hydra 1004, there's a simple equation. It's whatever bite you're wanting to use times 4 minus 1. So if we're wanting to manipulate the first bit, then we will need to take 1 times 4 minus 1, which in this case is 3. So we're going to break all of these and then go 1, 2, 3. Now since we need these to connect, we're going to take a piece of redstone dust and place it right here and everything works just fine. Now if we come to the exterior, we're going to automate the addition program we just did earlier. So we're going to do 5 and 1. Now that we come back into the Hydro 1004, you will see that the first byte is being powered and none of the other bytes are being powered. Now it is time for us to manipulate the second bit. So we will go out here and make sure that everything is off. Don't worry, the first bit won't be wiped. As you can see, it is still running, but nothing new is being written to the device. So now we're gonna come over here, and since the second bit is only four ticks from the first, because each of these bytes are within four ticks, we are simply just going to adjust these by four ticks. So we have one, two, three, four. So now we will be adjusting the second byte. So if we do one and no value, or the value of one if this was the RPC 2.1, then we will be adding the first register and the second register together and should be getting two and three, and so on. As you can see, both bytes or half of this hard drive is filled now. And if we wanted to continue automating this, there will be two more things we need to do. One is set register four to register three and activate the overflow so that register four can manipulate registers one and register two. To start manipulating the third byte, we are going to go back out here, turn everything off, make sure everything is off, otherwise, it could be pretty bad for you. And then we're going to go down in here and again, just update all of these by four. So one, two, three, four. Earlier in the video, we learned about the instruction set and that two will allow us to set register four to register three. So we're just going to go ahead and give it a value of two here on the instruction side and check and just make sure everything is working. Now, as you can see, everything's working great. Now, all we have to do is come right over here to this block right here, place a lever and flick it on, because if we check right in here, you can see that there is a torch that we just turned off. All we have to do is flick this lever to let the program run, and the Hydro 1004 will start adding. Now, results may vary, depending on what model you're using and how you have it built and whether you made mistakes or anything. But that is the general of how this program works. That's it for today, folks. Let me know down in the comments what you were able to make with these. Uh, if you enjoy content like this, then do make sure to subscribe according to YouTube analytics. You've already heard this, so I'm not going to waste your time. All I'm going to say is that we are on the road to 1 million subscribers and have about 1 million subscribers to go. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and let's go change the world.